you. Whoa, nice. Can I have everybody stand up, please? Everybody stand up. Okay, this is the last presentation of the day, right? They say I've got 18 minutes. So I need undivided attention for 18 minutes. You know, the slide edge says that it's the last phone call you make. It's the final thing you do. It's that extra little slide edge that you do every day that makes all the difference. Well, I am the extra difference today. You're tired and you're ready to go, but you need that extra phone call. This is the last phone call of the day is this speech for 18 minutes. Is that right? So everybody's undivided attention, right? I would like, I'm going to say an affirmation. Kevin Hall uh, did a great job, gets up and he talks about the power of words, power of affirmation. I'm going to state an affirmation as if it belongs to all of us, and I'd like you to say yes when I'm finished. I am more than enough. Say yes. Yes. I am the best me there is in the world. Say yes. Yes. Everybody take your seats. Thank you very much. Now, was that fun? Now, I'm going to talk to you about two things today. But make no mistake, the key to my presentation today is to help you to understand that you are more than enough. That you are the best you in the world. See, Viktor Frankl, I always said Frankl, so I guess it's Frankl. See, Kevin Hall's the word guy, so it's Frankl, right? Viktor Frankl was the best at being who? Viktor Frankl. Mother Teresa was the very best at being Mother Teresa, and that's why they made the difference they made in the world. And I'm here to share a message with you that you are the very best you there is. And if you will become your potential, if you will become all that you were meant to be, you will have that kind of lasting impact. See, there's genius in you that only you have. There's people in this life that at certain times only you can reach. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is going to help you tap in to that genius that's in you. Two things I want to talk about. I'm going to talk about promptings and I'm going to talk about tennis balls. Promptings and tennis balls. Now you may wonder, first of all, what exactly does promptings mean? And what in the world does promptings have to do with tennis balls? Well, sit back and enjoy because... I share with stories, and my stories today will help you to understand the significance of promptings and tennis balls. And if you use both of these stories, it will help you to reach the genius that's in you. So 18 minutes. Can we do it? You all ready to go? Okay, so promptings is the first thing. I had some significant things that happened in my life that are centered around that word. So here it's back in 1989. I uh, graduated from college, and uh, I was invited to do an internship back in New York City. I went and did it, big, large ad agency, had a great time, and when I finished, they offered me a job. So I came back to Salt Lake City. I was newly married at the time, had a little baby girl. She was 15 months old at the time, and, and I had the opportunity to gather all of our belongings together because we moved, we, we were in the process of moving from Utah all the way back to New York City so that I could take on this new job in, uh, in the big city. So I get back home, we get all of our belongings together, and the last stop that we made was over at mom and dad's house. Had to drive over to mom and dad's to say bye to the family. We have all of our belongings in a big U-Haul truck, and there's other people that are driving the U-Haul truck, and we're driving our car, and we go over to mom and dad's house, we say our goodbyes. We walk out the front of the house, I go to get in the car. We put our little baby girl in the car seat. I go get in the front of the car, and I look over about 200 feet away in a lot adjacent to my uh, parents' place. My older brother, Chris, was over there moving some company vehicles around. And uh, I had a prompting. See, there's that word. Now, if you don't understand the word, prompting is a thought or an intuition to reach out to somebody. I had a prompting at that time that I needed to slow down. Even though I was in a hurry to go, I had a prompting that I needed to slow down, go over to my brother, tell him I love him, give him a hug, and say goodbye. That was the prompting. Pretty specific, isn't it? Well, I ignored that prompting because we were in a hurry. I got in the car. I drove away. I honked and waved at him. He waved back at me. We traveled all the way across the country. 
Everything was going great. We settled into our new place. I got settled into my new job. Two to three months go by, and here we are sleeping soundly at night, and the phone rings. My mother is on the other end of the line. She tearfully let me know that my brother Chris had been killed that day in an industrial accident. Now, what do you suppose went through my mind when I got that news? The only thing I could think of is that I ignored a prompting to say goodbye to my brother, and I'd never have the chance to do it again. So that was an aha moment in my life, and I sat there. I remember I was in a little apartment. There was a brick wall. After I hung the phone up with my mom, I stared at that brick wall. And the only thing I could think of, was, again, was I ignored the prompting to say bye. And so I made a promise to my brother Chris that night. I said, I'm sorry, brother, and I promise you that when I have a prompting to reach out in kindness to another human being, I will act. And I'll do everything I can to help as many people as I can to act on their promptings every day. That was in 1989. From that day forward, my mission in life was centered around that one word. Everything I did had to do with helping myself and others act on promptings. In fact, I learned through the process over the next several years that there's really two types of promptings. The first is an inner prompting. An inner prompting, that's one a lot of times we don't recognize. The inner prompting is that thought or process that comes internally that tells you who you are as a human being. The outer prompting is the second time. That is the thought process to reach out to other people. So there's an inner prompting that tells you who you are, and the outer prompting tells you what to do with who you are. See, when you reach out to other people, it's nothing more than taking who you are and giving a little bit of yourself away to another human being. So the inner prompting is who you are, and the outer prompting is what you do with who you are. Y'all know number eight, right? I don't have any visuals today, don't need them. You can use your imagination. I want you to imagine the number eight. Everybody got that number eight pictured? Turn it sideways. Now what is it? It's the sign of, you, this is where you talk, it's the sign of, and why is it the sign of infinity? Why, why do they call it that? It never ends. So what I want you to do is imagine in your mind, you have that eight turned sideways now, it's now the sign of infinity. And I want you to imagine in your mind, just taking your finger and just tracing over that infinity sign. Just do it in your mind. You're tracing over the infinity sign. And once you start... And you're tracing, it never stops. That's why they call it sign infinity. There's no place for it to exit. You just keep on going. Imagine that in your mind. Now, here's what I want you to imagine. Now, if you'll notice that sign of infinity, there's a place on the left and a place on the right. On the left, what I'd like you to do is imagine the word inner prompting, who you are. And on the right side, imagine the word outer prompting, what you do with who you are. And now that infinity sign is a trail. It's a path that moves around those two things. Inner prompting is who you are. Outer prompting is what you do with who you are. And it creates an infinite flow. Imagine in your mind again that infinite flow. And what I'm telling you today is that if you will focus on those two things, surround your energies around those two things, you will create an infinite flow of positive energy in your life. And it never stops. It keeps on going. It's an amazing thing. And what I learned is that it doesn't matter where you start. You can act on the inner prompting that tells you who you are, and you can work on your personal development and read good books and listen to good tapes and, and have uh, I am statements and affirmations. You can do all that stuff, and it's great. And it's going to help you. The outer prompting is when you reach out to other people. Take who you are and give yourself away. And it doesn't matter where you start. I mean, if you have a, a prompting to reach out and say thank you to somebody simply get on the phone and say thank you. Write a card and send it to them in the mail. Do whatever it takes to thank somebody. Incredible speakers were here today. Thank them when they walk out the door because they gave of themselves today to be here. Powerful stuff. And if you will act on that out of prompting, it's going to guide you in your life. The more you act on those promptings, the more they will show up and they will guide you to where you're supposed to go. And the most important thing is this, they guide you to the genius that's in you. Doesn't matter where you start. 
Start with your personal development plan or start by acting out in kindness to others and keep doing it more and more every day. You start creating this infinite flow of positive energy in your life. Now, here's the challenge. The challenge is 87, you can walk out there out here. You're going to go home tonight. You're going to be in rush hour. Notice it's snowing outside and it's going to be a little slippery. Somebody may cut you off. And after all this motivation today, you're going to be on your way and real life's going to happen to you again, right? And 87% of everything you take in is negative. Fact. Can't do anything about that. So 87% of what you hear on the radio might want to just shut it off because it's negative. 87% of what's going on around you is negative. And so that's a big challenge that you have in your life. And, and when you have that negativity that comes into you, you start speaking to yourself in negativity. Does that make sense? So what happens is, is that that inner voice that tells you who you are as a person, it begins to be clouded with negativity. You grew up as a little kid, that inner voice, the inner prompting that tells you who you are as a person, that volume was loud and clear when you were a child. When you were a little kid growing up, loud and clear. You knew who you were. You had a vivid and wild imagination. You could accomplish the world. Nothing could get in your way until what? Until the world started beating you down. The world started telling you what you could and could not do. And unfortunately, 90% of the time you're hearing that, you start to buy into it. And the pitch or the volume goes down. So you learn that... Uh, that, that prompting, that inner prompting, the, vo the, the volume goes down further and further, and you learn to follow other people's voices, okay? What we want to talk about today is how to bring that volume back up again. Bring it back up. The inner prompting is who you are. That voice is still there. It's still sp trying to speak to you. If you will simply begin acting on your promptings, whether it's to reach out in kindness to others or read a good book or listen to a good tape and keep doing both of those things, you begin to create an infinite flow of positive energy and it guides you to the genius that's in you. You become the greatest you there is. Powerful stuff. Getting rid of the negativity. Now you're wondering about the tennis balls. See, that's the prompting side. Well, let's talk about the tennis balls just a second. In fact, I brought a few with me here today. What in the world does tennis balls have to do with what I just said? Well, here's a tennis ball right here. And, and I want to tell you another story. Love stories. Learned a Bible lesson from my dog, Gus. He's now 11 years old. At the time I started doing this, he was about four years old. And he's a black lab. And as most of you know, black labs love to fetch. I mean, they love... You bring a tennis ball out. In fact, I have a big bucket of tennis balls in my backyard. So when I go out in the backyard, I'll grab a tennis ball and I'll start to bounce it like this. And when I bounce the ball like this, Gus comes running. Wherever he is, he senses that Cody, his master, is bouncing the tennis ball. So he comes running. He knows that if I'm doing this, he knows I'm going to eventually chuck the ball out the backyard. He's excited. Tail wagon, big ol' eyes, can't wait to run out to fetch the ball. Sure enough, bam, I'll throw the ball out there. He goes running out as fast as he can. He grabs that ball, puts it in his mouth. Once he gets the ball in his mouth, he will not let it go. He brings it back to me, and again, he won't let it go. And so I literally, I have to pry the tennis ball out of his mouth. I'm prying and prying. Finally, I get out of the mouth. Now, once I get that tennis ball out of his mouth, what's on the ball? Slimy, gooky, grimy, ugh, stuff. He doesn't care that there's grimy stuff on it. I'll bounce it a couple times, chuck it back out there, and I'll make sure this time it gets out where the dirt is. So it's got this grimy stuff on it. It rolls through the dirt. You think that dog cares? He care less. Goes running out there. He grabs that ball in his mouth. Now it's grimy. It's gucky. It's dirty. It's unwanted. He doesn't care. He comes running back with that grimy, gucky tennis ball in his mouth. He will not let it go. So what do you suppose I do? I got a big bucket of tennis balls, so I grab a new one. Here's the old one. It's in his mouth. Here's the new one. I start bouncing the new tennis ball. It's shiny. It's new. It's beautiful. Which one does the dog want? He wants the new one. Now he's got the old one in his mouth, but it's the new one that he wants. Sure enough, 
Chuck the ball out there. He goes running out there as fast as he can. He'll go down. But he, he stops, grabs, looks at the ball. He's got the old one's mouth, looks down, looks up at me, looks back down. Can't figure out how to get it in his mouth because he's got the old one in there. Looks up at me and he'll lay down next to the new ball and the game's over. <laughs> now, I know what you're all thinking right now. You think, you think I got a dumb dog, don't you? You better be careful. I love my dog. Okay, but I want you to think about what every single one of us do. We do exactly the same thing. See, there's this thing in life called old, grimy, gucky tennis balls. It's called old stories, limiting beliefs, stinking thinking, as Zig Ziglar would say. All the gucky, grimy stuff that we've captured in our lives and we began to believe. Those grimy, gucky, limiting beliefs got into our head and we stopped listening to the inner voice that told us who we were as a person. And we started listening to the nonsense that was out there. And that's what we all do. Now what happens is, a lot of times in your life, new possibility shows up. It's a brand new, shiny tennis ball. You've been sitting here throughout the day today getting golden nuggets of wisdom from incredible speakers. And they've shared with you things that are going to help you in your life. They brought to you today new shiny tennis balls. The question I have for you, what are the old ones in your head that are blocking you from picking up the new? See, I showed up here today with a brand new shiny tennis ball. It's called new possibility. It's called your future. It's called your potential. This ball represents the best you that there is. The genius that's only you have. That's what this ball represents. And I'm ready to throw it out there. Are you ready to pick it up? And what is it that's keeping you from doing it? Very important thing. Now, there's only one thing I could do to get my dog Gus to drop the old tennis ball and pick up the new. If I took the new tennis ball and if I throw it out in the backyard, if I throw it over and over and over and over again. Eventually, he drops the old, he picks up the new, and he has now what he desires. You and I, ladies and gentlemen, can do exactly the same thing. We can reprogram our minds the same way by rewriting the stories that we put in there. I am the best at being me. I am financially independent and free, rather than saying, I can't afford to do that. See, we have all this crazy negative language that we're saying every single day, and you don't even know you're doing it. I have people say to me all the time, yeah, those I am statements or affirmation, that's a bunch of crap. Really? Do you really believe that? Because I'm going to show you, if you think it is, you're living your I am statements right now, and they always challenge me. I find out what's, what kind of situation they are at in their life. It's usually people that are broken, people that are on, they're, they're on the downswing, they're in financial ruins, they're overweight, they're not living the desires of their life, and they don't believe that these I am statements or affirmations work. And we begin to explore what their current language is. Guess what they're saying every day? I'm broke. I can't afford it. I am overweight. I, just, I have to take a shower even saying the words. And that is the language that most people are using every day. And if you don't believe that that affirmation being sent to your subconscious mind isn't work, you're crazy. The sad thing is, in the world today, 90% of the people are living those I am affirmations in negativity. It's our role to switch that. Switch it to positivity because the story that you put in your mind becomes the story that you live in your life. And it always starts here and it only starts with what you put there. So bringing this presentation full circle. The power of the prompting is this. The inner prompting tells you who you are as a person. It's important to nourish that inner prompting with positivity. Nourish it every day with the best positive information you can. The outer prompting is what you do with who you are. 
have a mechanism to send out positivity to the world every day, whatever it may be. But reach out in kindness to others every single day. I promise you, if you will do those two things, you will create an infinite flow of positive energy in your life and you will be the best you that there is in the world. God bless you. Thanks. For